It's an early morning start here on day three of the Canton Yachting Festival and our boat this morning for a quick sea trial is this triple Mercury 600 horsepower outboards on the transom. This is the Azimut Verve 48. So the helm station here is really nice and pared back, feels really modern. We've got space here on the main tier of the dash for three 16-inch plotters. We've got some lovely vents, four of those, to keep you cool in the heat. And in spite of the protection of this hardtop, there's plenty of visibility too, so that's great. Now we've got the uh, wheel adjustable here, adjustable seat too, up and down, forwards and backwards, electrically, which is also a nice touch. And we've got the uh, joystick with uh, skyhook and the uh, bow thruster, uh, both to the side of the throttle there, handy for your right hand, uh, plus a remote for these plotters and your tabs to the left hand. Cool, so we'll just uh, trim her back in and get her up and running. As I say, we've got three Mercury 600 horsepower outboards on the transom of this boat. And that's the only option you get here. We've also got about seven people on board here today, seven or eight, and we've got our tank pretty much full. So we're carrying a decent load here today, around about 18 tonnes. Now this is a Michael Peters hole, double step, but there's still a decent bit of heel in that turn, and a decent bit of grip too. Make really good progress. And you notice, because these are uh, triple 600s, Mercury 600 horsepower outboards, we got that two-speed transmission, so as you come past 3,500 RPM, it switches into that upper gear, which means you get plenty of extra pace. Straight away, you go from 15 knots right up to 30 knots. And at that kind of pace, we're burning about 9 litres per nautical mile. Now, we've got a 2,200-litre tank with a 20% uh, safety margin in reserve. That gives us about 1,800 litres to play with. So that's a 200 nautical mile range, which is pretty good for a uh, what is ostensibly a day boat like this. If you open it right up towards the top end, around about 47 knots, that increases to about 11 litres per nautical mile. But at everything from 30 to 40 knots, that 200 nautical mile range is really pretty decent. And as I say, She's quite an enjoyable plaything too. I'll just trim her in a touch and we'll go around and start her again. Really decent visibility all round. And you can actually throw her around a little bit like a bit of a plaything. It's quite a lot of fun to be had here. And one of the reasons for that, of course, aside from the hull and those big juicy outboards, is the fact that there's a lot of carbon fibre used in the construction of this boat. Not in the hull, of course, but in the deck, the superstructure, and that T-top, loads of carbon fibre. And you really feel that here. Well, we're safely back alongside now after our morning's drive, so we'll take a little walk to the back end of this boat, because it's based, of course, on the old Azimut Verve 47. Now, that was a boat that was available with a quadruple rig of 450s. And apparently, according to the guys at Azimut, even though these triple 600s amount to the same overall power at about 1800 horsepower, they're actually 10 decibels quieter, which apparently is the difference between a hairdryer and a helicopter. Now, I'm not sure that our drive bore that out, but the guys here also tell me that the triple rig is about 15% more efficient than the quadruple rig. And actually, for a boat of this style and size and performance, the fuel flow figures we saw out there were pretty decent. Now let's step down onto this swim platform where you'll see we've got an enormous locker ahead of those engines. That's drained, really good size. You stick loads of stuff down there, your fenders, your lines, your toys. To starboard of that, we have the waste outlet and a transom shower plus our shore power down here. And that makes good sense because the point of access to the cockpit is on the port side. And if I just 
drop this locker down and take a little pier into that cockpit from back here. You'll see that it's arranged asymmetrically with an L-shaped seating unit and a really big, wide, open deck. Now this section of deck we see here, that's actually quite a versatile piece of equipment. You can lift that right up to use it as a table. You can drop it down to cushion level to extend the sunbed, or you can drop it right into the deck, recess it like this, in which case it's pretty much dance floor mode. And what's particularly enjoyable about this big open deck is the fact that on the port side we can drop down this bulwark. Now we've seen plenty of these on other boats before, particularly day cruisers like this. But where it differs from the 47 is that the 47's drop down bulwark stops short. This one extends right back to the swim platform. So even when you have this entire deck covered with freestanding furniture and the parties going on in there, you can still make your way right aft and around to this aft swim platform unencumbered. That ease of movement is echoed up here at the galley. Now on the 47, you could only get past down one side. Here, we've got nice big walkways on both sides of that space. And given the purpose of this big cockpit as a party zone, what I also like is the fact that we've got easy access to big, big coolers. If I lift this cushion here, you see we've got a nice big drained, lined space. You can use that for storage. You can fill it with ice and beer and get the party going. The same goes here, a nice big drained space. And we also have a really big cooler under the deck just here on the port side, currently filled with lines and covers, but again, nicely lined. So it's an effective party space, this. And the bow is pretty impressive too. Let's head up there now on the starboard side, make our way up a couple of steps. It's not particularly wide, this walkway, but it's certainly serviceable. And these rails here do come up a decent height. So it feels pretty secure. And when we get up here, well, you get pretty much what you expect at the outset, which is a sunbed for three or four people here in the centre. It looks like these can lift up a little. Yeah, they can with little braces under there. Quite a rudimentary kind of system to secure those, and it doesn't look especially strong, but it's better to have that adjustability than not. You also have drained cup holders and good grab rails. And what I really like here, though, is the way they've used the length of this bow, because we've got space up here for a really lovely, intimate little lounge. And although I'm not sure it is, it feels a little bit sunken, which makes it feel even more intimate. It's right up here in the forepeak. So you can sit perhaps seven or eight people around here, right up in the bow with fantastic views all round. All it really lacks is a fridge, which seems to me a bit of an oversight because it's the perfect place for a little slide out fridge beneath one of these seats so you don't have to head aft beyond the helm to that galley to fetch your drinks. Let's walk back down the port side this time. You'll see the hard top comes right out all the way, uses the full beam. So we've got massive space in here. We've seen this on boats like uh, Genoa's DB series and it's pretty effective. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, when we were out on the water, there's a lot of carbon fibre used in the construction of this, so it's pretty lightweight too. That's not to say that this hardtop is in any way simplistic. In fact, on the contrary, it's a very complex and impressive piece of work. As you can see at the leading edge, we've got a set of speakers, we've got the Fusion Remote, we've got the uh, compass stowed away up there, so you don't have to take your eyes too far off the water. And we also have a couple of buttons. Now this one, of course, is for the sunroof directly above us here. And this one, just next to that, that's for this tiny hatch. You have to undo that, uh, that little uh, bracket first. But once you do, that can then slide open and introduces, if I move into the helm position, cold air scoops it directly down onto the skipper. So that's a nice touch. I like that a lot. If we look around again, we'll see it's also got grabbing handles. And if we move further off, we've got spotlights that look directly down onto the galley. This is not a sunroof, that's just a swanky little piece of Italian design. 
with some ambient lighting to set it off. It looked quite cool at night with those uh, faceted angles. And if we move aft again, you'll see we've got a nice big telescopic sunshade that comes right out over that big cockpit all the way beyond the backrest for that aft bench. So again, that very much supports this boat's role as a party venue, and so does the galley. If I lift that up, we've got a pair of really big electric burners there. We've got spaces down beneath that for a bin and a bit of storage, plus a fridge in here and an ice maker directly next to that, and up above there, a really good size of sink. So that's a pretty impressive part of the boat. If you like, you can also choose a uh, TV, a pop-up TV in this part of the galley that faces aft towards the guys on the aft bench there. But what we'll do now is pop down below and see what kind of cruising facilities this boat offers. And when you come down here, you find yourself immediately in quite a spacious, surprisingly spacious lounge. We've got a big L-shaped tee on the port side with a drop-down table. You can use an infill, of course, to turn that into an occasional berth. We've also got low-level windows there, which actually are at just the right height to see the horizon when you sit down at this lounge. After that, we've got a little wine fridge here, plus a pair of fridges, I believe, just to the side of that. Yeah, big drawer fridges, one here and one down below, plus the electrics panels here. And if we spin around, you'll see that we have a decent galley on the starboard side too, with a sink and a two-ring electric hob plus an oven there, and a bit more storage down below. Again, we have the moulding, this time for the starboard side deck, of course, but that's kind of disguised here with a mirror, which is a decent little touch. And over here on the port side, when you sit down, that moulding is actually at sufficient height that there's no chance of you banging your head. And let's move forward and take a look at the bow cabin. Conventionally, of course, this would be the owner's cabin hanging storage behind that mirror in that unit on the port side. And a bit more shelving space by the looks of it on either side there. Quite compact windows, but as I say, it's quite a compact cabin. So let's back out of there and head aft and look on the starboard side. Now you'd expect this to be the day heads and that's exactly what it is. This is a good size. It feels quite fresh, everything's very bright and clean. There's a separate shower in there, a good size of sink, an electric loo. Again, a decent window there. And there's actually a rain shower in there too, so that's a very nice touch. If we head further aft beneath that cockpit sole, you'll see we've got a, a twin cabin here. There's a couple of steps that go straight down and plenty of natural height beneath that helm up above. There's about there's nearly eight foot of headroom in there actually. So if we step down into there, that's a decent place to change of course. And in the cabin itself, well, we've got a little window beneath that port deck. On the starboard side, no such luck. But what we do have here is plenty of storage behind these doors with a little rail to hang your gear up. And we also have an increase in the height of the deck head here, just at the head end of the bed. So you can sit up in bed, take advantage of those reading lights. There's additional storage on the port side, which is a good size. It runs all the way through there to that aft bulkhead. And if I perch myself over at the bed, you'll see we've also got a compact TV flush mounted into that bulkhead forward. So there we have it, that's the new range topping, Azimut Verve 48. Now it has the look and feel of an Italian boat designed and built for the American market, particularly with those massive outboards on the transom. But look, it's, it's a boat that improves on the party ability of the 47 that it replaces. It also delivers decent, if not spectacular, accommodation down below for long weekends away. It's a fine boat to look at, and it's also a really good fun boat to drive, so I see no reason why it shouldn't have plenty of appeal in Europe too. Mm -hmm.